All right, they are done siding and game. Oh, look. Oh, I I waltzed in on the beginning of game two. So they each have one win um, now, so it's game three. I don't know if I'm going to be uploading game two, but um, it I will be uh, uploading it, actually, because it's a great example of why Night Beam is a crap card. <laughs> and uh, also just educating players how to play around Night Beam. Um, I like my subscribers to be the best duelists out there. So, All right, so looks like he's going to, after... Uh, I think he, like, accidentally set a monster or something. He's going to Foolish for the Archfiend. Maybe he has Launcher. Okay, he has the Necromancer. That's why I was going to say. Normally, you dump Stygian before anything else. But he has the Necromancer. And he's going to be able to search out something with this Archfiend. Probably a barrier, since he's got no other cards to... Well, you know, those could be face-down spells. So, um... I hate it when noobs, uh, and, uh, I play against noobs and infer- He's adding Necromancer. Okay. Okay, so he's gonna make Levolvo Chain. Dump Stygian by detaching Archfiend. And, uh, use the Stygian to summon the Necromancer once again. Unless he gets DD Crowed. Will he get DD Crowed? No, he would've gotten DD Crowed earlier. But Stygian will banish itself, allowing him to special summon the Necromancer, allowing him to special summon the Archfiend, allowing the loops to continue. Now, my question is, will he search out Launcher or a Break? Because, or Barrier, I forgot he hasn't added Barrier yet, actually. But he hasn't uh, burnt any, um... Okay, Launcher. So, I think he might overlay these two Necromancers detaching one uh for something like levier and um yep he's gonna detach one for levier allowing him to get back stygian overlay the archfiend and the stygian um uh, i wonder which one he'll detach because he wants both of those in the graveyard probably um what the fuck what the hell what the he diamond dire wolf to take out the levier this guy is ballsy Wow, how what's his rating? Four oh seven. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh, okay. He wanted to bring back both um necromancer with his. I'm gonna have to like analyze that play after this duel, cause that's crazy. If you're still going plus like that, um, diamond direwolfing your own um levier. I mean, yes, you do get both necromancers back, which. Wait, how did he get the second uh, Archfiend in the graveyard? We'll never know. Did he make us... Uh, okay, so he's detaching Levier, probably to send... Okay, oh yeah, of course, Eris, to get the uh, Palabrinth. Then he'll be able to banish that middle Necromancer to some... Okay, so he's going to summon the Archfiend first. Oh yeah, because you need an Archfiend to activate Pearl Labyrinth's effect. Now he's going to banish, well at first he's going to add a, a break, that means he probably has barrier already set, or he just likes break better. He's going to use Pearl Labyrinth to banish a Necromancer, and summon another Archfiend, allowing him to set another back row card, another break. I'm going to assume that he has the uh, barrier. Now he will probably end, because he can't summon another um, Necrom uh, Archfiend out of his deck, with Palabrinth because there are no more Archfiend in his deck. And look at this field, folks. This is the glory that is Infernity. Turning five cards into ten. You heard that right. No, eleven! Eleven cards because of Archfiend Palabrinth. That is absolutely insane. Infernity, I love the deck. Imagine if there was, like, Infernity Pendulums. Because the only thing stopping him is the fact that he has no more spots to put anything. But if he had, like, Infernity Pendulums, he could, uh... <laughs> he could, um, like, go plus, uh, 13. And that would be perfect for, like, all the demon stuff, the unlucky number 13. So he's got the Magnagora Special Summon itself, and the Kirkion... Um, he's going to break that Kirkion. And honestly, I do not see um, 
the Duel Master coming back from this. This is too... That is too much advantage, folks. Uh, sets four pass. This is a heavy back row um, evil swarm, which makes sense because you really only need to protect Ophion. He's going to take out the macro cosmos, which really would not have done that much because he could have broken it if need be. But the thing is, it really wouldn't have done much in the first place since all of his stuff is already on board because that's a floodgate card. And guess what? The flood already happened. And... I'm going to go ahead and say that it is scoop phase. Oh, he's going to negate because he's... Oh, he already burned through his diamond dire wolf, though. Maybe he runs, too. But I was going to say... I would pro um, would that, that wouldn't be enough damage, though, would it? Now that his necromancer won't be able to summon back the archfiend. All right, so Lavalva Chain is going to dump Armageddon Knight for some reason. Not really sure why. How did that get back in the deck? Is it from the hand deck or graveyard? Hand deck or graveyard. That is absolutely amazing. But he already searched out every single Infernity card in his deck. But that plus that he doesn't get isn't really going to matter because this is game over? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that it was reduced to the uh, 230. Yeah, because I don't know if you guys realized uh, they gained 500 attack all the fiends. And that was absolutely amazing, Duel by our Infernity player. If you guys want to learn how to play Infernity, study this match. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind at this point that that Diamond Direwolfing your own Levier was a... That was beautiful. I just... In my pants. This is first turn. Yes. <laughs> that was epic. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna get another duel with Diapson for sure, guys. Um, this has been Slacker Magician. Don't want to miss the beginning of his next duel. So this will be me signing out instead of going on a, a longer rant about Infernities. See you guys next time.